it's just 75 years plus of like the same occupation that's been going on. The water supply is diverted, a very limited access to electricity, and there's kind of no real place where this is home. The coverage of like the Middle East in general, but especially Palestine is so like, oh, this many people died and that's literally all you hear. And obviously that is so important, but it just means that there's a whole other aspect of humanity that's completely overlooked. Your graduate film, Checkpoint, why was that such an important film for you to make? Yeah, I want to tell a story that is about a community that are like kind of slowly being erased, I would say. It's tragic what happened to us, but we are not a tragedy. The human capacity to just, especially children's capacity, that's the only thing that they kind of know. We know that they that they shouldn't be in that situation, but showing the joy and showing the fact that they're yeah. living with it is, I think, really important. They're humans and that is their life for now. Please, please, please. Tell us about what you picked. It's called The Tower by Matt Grorud. It's very close to a perfect film in my in my eyes. Joy and hope and like, they're not a linear thing. I've not seen another film that does that, especially not an animated one. This is a film about Palestinians, but a community who don't have permanence at all. I think the idea of having something permanent that reflects your community, that's kind of really important. Quick one, I wanted to speak directly with you all before we jump into this episode. As you can see, we're scaling up and shifting course. Inspiration is always something that has fascinated me. And I've always had the urge to uncover and share my findings with all of you here. And I promise that is exactly what I'm going to keep doing. How I'm doing that is evolving into these conversations. So one favor, if you've ever watched this show, and especially if you've enjoyed it or learned something new and interesting, do me a favor and follow on this platform or just share these videos around. It really, really helps me scale up the production, scale up the guests, so everything just gets bigger and bigger. And I promise I will repay that gesture by making sure everything gets better and better and bigger and bigger. How does that sound? Hello. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to Animator's Breakfast. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm so excited to have you here, genuinely, as we've been saying the whole way. I know. I've been such a fan for like three years. I've literally, I remember watching the, which one was it? It was the animating reality video in like first year. And I was like, I absolutely love it. I'd like binge watched all of them the whole really? of uni. Yeah. yeah. All four at that all stage. All four of them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But then, you know, every time they'd come on, I'd be like, thank you. Come stand another one. No, yeah. I, thank you so much. Could you, in your own words, introduce yourself Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and tell everyone a bit about yourself? Sure. So um, I'm Jana. And um, so I, in third year, directed a short film called Checkpoint, which is about a young girl called Layla who is living in the occupied West Bank. And she has to cross a military checkpoint to get to school. Um, and yeah, so me and my team, my team and I, we worked on it for like... Um, the whole of third year and then um it very I'm very blessed because it went on to do quite well with like the festivals and stuff for the past kind of year and a half so we did um Toronto Animation Festival and Pinewood and stuff like that which was cool it meant a lot because it's um obviously it's I'm Palestinian it's like a cause that's very close to my mine and my family's heart so it's yeah it's really cool I think that's where I first kind of uh found you or you found me i found you, <laughs> you yeah found me. <laughs> <laughs> but with, with you came this incredible story that you presented in checkpoint you hadn't yeah. finished it at that stage no yeah. but i was excited to see it you know because obviously you said it's a story that's close to your heart yeah definitely yeah i wanted to tell a story that um i think especially at that stage because it was like we were pitching um and and, and it was like a third year thing where it's like what's the kind of What's the word? Like either, either it's going to get picked or it isn't. So I was like, I'm just going to do something that's like really, that's a story that I want to tell that is about a community that are like kind of slowly being erased, I would say, because I feel like the coverage of like the Middle East in general, but especially Palestine is so kind of, it's either really myopic in terms of like, you know, these are just an oppressed people and like, it's kind of just about their suffering and not really so much about 
just them as people and so I kind of was like let me tell the story through the eyes of a young girl who I would relate to kind of like and kind of very studious like she just kind of wants to go to school and she like loves her family and it's kind of that Uh, especially the age like it's quite a sort of you're just it's such a the 11 kind of the age of 11 is like such a you're just absorbing Mm. the world around you and it was kind of the idea of how she would absorb the world around her being in a conflict zone and that's kind of the only world that she knows and I think this idea that um that in a conflict zone that's kind of um Palestinians being like a byproduct of their conflict zone rather than them sort of existing as humans and then that they kind of just have to get used to it and it's kind of I think there's this thing of like Palestinians um being a bit more than just their suffering that I kind of wanted to get yeah yeah and so your family comes from Palestine yeah and how like how far back generation it's your grandparents right yeah so in um so there's the 1948 like Nakba which is where they there was like a mass expulsion of Palestinians so they either went to mainly Jordan um Syria Lebanon or Egypt so weird Jordanian I know yeah yeah, just like kind of around um so yeah like as a kid I wouldn't I wouldn't really ever say that I was Palestinian because I didn't really even know until a bit later because I think like my parents were kind of like, oh, don't, don't say it just because like, especially in the early 2000s, like it wasn't really recognized as a proper kind of, I think it would just, it brings up a lot of controversy. So it was kind of like, oh, we're Jordanian. Um, Yeah. So it's kind of, it's, it's an interesting, it's, it's really weird. And it's also not on a map, Palestine. So it's kind of like, where am I from? And like, even just saying Jordanian, people be like, oh, like Jordan, like Jordanese. And you'd be like, that, that, yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of like, yeah, it's an interesting, I think definitely coming to terms with my like background um, has been quite a recent thing. Like I didn't really engage with it even that much. I mean, like, obviously I was, I was aware of the fact that I was Arab, but the whole Palestine um, side of things, I didn't really fully understand when did that occur like who set you down and told you or I did think you it, just look into it yourself I think yeah it's kind of just through the years you kind of pick up more and more about things because it's almost like it's almost so I know we're gonna get to it but <laughs> yeah. it's interesting because it links onto the story but it's um yeah you kind of just learn things gradually it's almost like a layered process mm. so it's not all just like you know everything from the start because there's so many layers to the family history and kind of what who went where what happened um so I guess it's kind of yeah and then in 2019 I went to the West Bank for the first time um and it was almost more of a kind of educational kind of visit um which was it was pretty crazy because we'd like get in a taxi and the taxi driver would be would be telling us that you know like the water supply is diverted um they only get a very limited access to like electricity and water and stuff and it's just crazy that it's kind of this is literally still it's 75 years plus of like the same occupation that's been going on and yeah when you went to the west bank did Mm. you feel connected to the place or did you feel kind of like diaspora i think that's the thing it's kind of like you feel connected to the place but in a kind of weird way of like the the culture is has kind of migrated to because there's so many Palestinian um refugees in Jordan so Jordan has kind of like for me become what I think Palestine would have been had we Uh, had we yeah Yeah, which is yeah. yeah and I think there's also this sense of like um because it's so difficult to live in Palestine um as a Palestinian it's kind of there's the sense of guilt if you do leave um but obviously not for the people who had to leave in 1948 but like now the people who are living a lot of them are having to leave because it's quite like there are no kind of opportunities and it's like being made harder and harder to live there um especially in yeah so the west bank and in, and in gaza but it's like also very difficult to leave but i think it's just like it's interesting because yeah, there's kind of no real place where that where it's kind of like this is home. Yeah. Schwarz farm. I know, it's it? yeah. massive. Yeah. 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 It's interesting because it's like, you know, it's a real issue that people bat an eye to a lot. Yeah. 
truly and that's obviously due to political reasons but yeah. unfortunately you know these are still people yeah you know, and that's the thing. we're all people that's and, the thing we're yeah. all people and the humanity is lost somewhere. it is so lost so in that vein let's yeah. talk about your pick then yeah so <laughs> it's um, not shark tail <laughs> not shark tail it's very close close second yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um it's so it's called the tower by matt Grorud. he's a norwegian director um i probably butchered his name but um so it's a story about an 11 year old girl called wardi who um she lives in a tower block in lebanon um so it's like a very overcrowded uh, tower tower block that's full of Palestinian refugees. And basically she has a very close relationship with her great grandfather. And um, so one day he, he wears this key around his neck, um, which is the key to his home that he was kind of expelled from in 1948. And one day he gives it to her um, and she, and that prompts her to think that he's lost hope of ever returning but she doesn't even understand the concept of where he came from because she's only young so she starts to ask her family um around the tower so she goes to each of the family members and starts to ask about her where she came from and like what does it mean um because he says he says at one point um we're nothing if we if we don't understand our past and she doesn't understand that so she starts asking questions and it's really cool because you kind of follow the journey with her so it even as someone who doesn't know if you did like if you started from a baseline of knowing like just the bare minimum it kind of by following a child asking these questions you slowly pick up the same information with her which I think is a really nice journey to go on yeah and yeah. also it's like um you know, my experience watching the film was yeah. it felt personal to me. Yeah. Even though it's nothing to do with my family or yeah, anything. I felt thing. like, oh, my family went through it. And then I was like, no, I did. they didn't. No, they didn't. Yeah, <laughs> they didn't at all. Yeah. But it's presented so well. I know, yeah. Really, like, I think what I really appreciated about the film is, obviously, it's just, you know, it's a mix of mediums, but it's yeah. primarily stop motion. When they're telling their stories, it switches medium. Yeah. And that's good because it creates this divide. But it also, when I think back in the film, it's the memory of both feels like I've watched two different things. Yeah. It feels like the memories that they're talking about are memories. Yeah. Um, and the world that she lives in, you know, the that's the role. Yeah. Stop motion world. Yeah. I think it's so well done. The layering of techniques. I think it really, it mimics the sort of the layer. Cause I think it's kind of, it's so nonlinear in terms of the, the idea of, even like hope as a as a concept that's kind of the main theme of it, and I think that that is reflected really well in the in the way that he does the layering of the techniques because it's like you've got your stop motion with all the kind of sets and they're really well kind of they mirror the tower narrative, and I think it's just so well done. And then with the yeah, and then with the kind of dream interpretations um, being two D, I think it's really cool how they're quite fragmented, like they're not fully the animation's not completely like it's quite like it's a bit choppy but I think it works so well and then also the live action footage when when they're looking through like I don't know how much I'm, I'm not it's not really a spoiler but like when they're looking through spoiler, the photo that's album that's the point of this yeah. yeah if you haven't seen it watch it first and come definitely back. I mean yeah. try and find it though because it's like <laughs> <laughs> impossible I found it to on find on uh, an Arab extreme service. did you, you oh I'll the come. first time I watched it yeah. yeah when you recommended it yeah, yeah I had to find it like Pirated, which is what they got. Do not own it. <laughs> yeah. no. I mean, we're in France right now. So, yeah. But yeah, I think also the way I found it really cool how as she climbs the tower, she gets further up as the narrative progresses. And like she kind of, yeah, she uncovers more layers to the story as she goes up. And the idea of like, you know, it's so true to life. Like it's one of the most authentic representations of like, Palestinians that I've seen like especially in animation and it just like really warmed my heart I was because it was so like there are kind of these poetic phrases that they use that are like not really directly translatable into English but like he uses uh, them and okay. I'm just like yeah oh it's so perfect like even so apparently they showed it to, so they showed the film to um a camp of refugees in because we should posit he worked 
Yeah, oh, so camps, yeah. he worked at, so his mum. That's why yeah, he's a Norwegian. So, yeah, he's a Norwegian. Yeah, so yeah, the yeah. background is that his mum was a nurse in the camps and he uh, lived in the camp for a year. And he, I think he even speaks a bit of Arabic, which is really cool. Yeah, which is pretty much more than, yeah, I could do, which is amazing. Um, but yeah, so I think it's just like the, the attention to detail, like with the language and the way that, um, the way that, the way that it's just layered so well with the with the sound design, with the attention to language, with with the sort of visual elements, I just think everything works together so beautifully in the film. Do you think that's like because in your experience it's an authentic authenticity? <laughs> yeah. uh, Irish people in two cages, it's, it's a struggle. Authenticity. Yeah. Let's just say it in my yeah. natural tongue. Like the authenticity in the in the how he's approached it. The, there's like truth. And not just the story, tell, yeah. but like in visual truth by visual incorporating truth. live action footage. I stuff. think so. I think that the way, yeah, I I would say that the visual, the the footage, like when they're looking through um, the photo album and stuff, I just, that was the part where I was like suddenly completely like obsessed with the film. I was like, wow, that is so beautifully integrated with, and I think that having that kind of break from, because I think, there is a sense of like, oh, it's an animated film. Like you kind of forget that it's real people. Yes. Um, and I also think that having it in the middle of the film rather than just like not to drag Waltz with Bashir, but just like putting it at the end of the film, or I a, think <laughs> makes a big like yeah. difference because it's kind of like, I think it's just good. And also having Palestinian joy as a concept is so, oh, just not even Palestinian joy, but I think Middle Eastern like happiness and joy is just not a thing Rather that you than, see. It's not. So it's like, like a narrative of yeah, conflict. It's all just the time. A, a narrative of like oppression, conflict. So having her, having them look through the pictures in the photo album and even where where he asks, like, oh, how is your brother so happy? Like, why does he look so happy in the pictures? And he, and and, the aunt, and her aunt is saying, oh, he was the first boy in the camp to break dance and stuff like that. And it's like the, these like beautiful little snippets that just show like you know, they don't, they're not, obviously it's tragic what, what happened to, this is another quote from the film where they're like, it's tragic what happened to us, but we are not a tragedy. And it's kind of that idea of, yeah, I just think it's so beautifully, I don't, I've not seen another film that does that, especially not an animated one where it's, it just humanizes the characters so well. Cause also the difference between sympathizing with characters versus like empathizing with them, I think is in the smaller moments. So like the grandma fixing the ceiling fan, the mum shouting at the kids to like do their homework, stuff like that. I think it just layers so well and makes it such a beautiful, like just a full completion of a character and like of, of a kind of world that you just don't see very often. And like back to the sort of Middle Eastern joy thing, I just feel like it's exactly like out, like these kind of news articles being, being like, oh, this many people died and stuff like that. That's literally all you hear. And obviously that is so important, but there's just, it just means that there's a whole other aspect of humanity that's completely overlooked. And that means that it makes it very difficult to relate to something that you have no, that you're so far away from. Yeah. And this idea of like, I was looking at this thing of scope and sensitivity where people become kind of unresponsive to how many people after a while like numbers it could be 10 million or it could be 10,000 and like there's a 10 and there's a few the zeros same. and it means yeah. the same thing so I think that's why the stories like this is so important do you think it would work for someone who has no understanding of the conflict yeah I think I think it, I think that's the thing is because it, it you don't feel um sort of almost talked down to in a way because because you're following a little girl who is ex also learning these things for the first time I think that's part of the mastery of the film where it's kind of like you I think that the way that it's done it shows where they are now and it shows how they're not really like wallowing they're kind of just getting on with it um but then it also does show the gravity of what happened and you know like horrible things that you don't like that are really hard to watch but yeah. I think by not focusing on that entirely like I think if the film was entirely the flashback montage and then like maybe ended with them in the present day I think that would have been different but I think by constantly going between the two I think it's so effective in kind of 
showing that, you know, they'll they'll recall something tragic that happens and then immediately, you know, and then they'll sit with that for a bit and then laugh about something else. And I just think that's so beautiful. Like the like hope isn't and joy and hope and like they're not a linear thing. And I think that's what films often do where they're kind of like, oh, we're sad, so we have to stay sad for the whole film. And I, I really like the idea that it like, you know, ups and downs yes, of yeah. Yeah. Um, like there's a scene that I think encapsulates it really well where uh, her granddad is watching the news and it's like another, uh, you know, another uprising. And then it switches to um, live action footage of Um Kalthum, who's like this, I think it's Um Kalthum, or it might have been Feirouz, but anyway, it's an Arab singer and she's like a kind of, um, a, like a staple singer. And I just think that was like that change of channel, I think is really, I think I think it's cool that it almost reflects the way that the film was built with the, you know, the hope rising and falling where it's like, oh, we have, you know, they should have just killed us all. Like that, that's one thing that they say at one point. And then like the grandma will laugh that off and be like, haha, like you just need to drink your coffee. And yeah. like, I, I, I think that's really realistic to kind of have these de like self-deprecating phrases that are kind of, and then, you know, it's almost such a byproduct of their life that they've learned to live with this sort of the constant blows I think it's really, I think it's really well done and really realistic. Something that sticks out to me in, in, in when we talk about this is like traditional narratives are exactly that. Yeah, you know, there's the the nuance of emotion is plotted through. Yeah, the the story rather than anyone who's ever gone through tragedy. I I mean, true tragedy. It's probably the time in your life you laugh the most as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, when you're with people. Every, you know, if you lose a loved one, suddenly the, the things that happen are just miraculously beautiful. You know, yeah. the truth of humanity really shines in it's those amazing. moments. Yeah. And, you know, pe other people are like, oh, it's so sad. It's so sad. But you're like laughing and cackling and exactly. having a good time because the, I really find those emotions are so close. And there's a reason why the comedy and sad face of the theater because yeah. they're the two emotions that That's we so kind true. of fluctuate between the yeah. yin and the yang of everything so i really like the idea that you pointed that out it just switches the channel you know it's <laughs> yeah. just like oh i'm still going yeah if, you know yeah, it just changes i think that was a really i don't know if that if that wasn't i'm sure it was intentional because it's a, it's animated film yeah, <laughs> yeah so it's really really cool but i thought that that scene stood out because of the way that yeah, and then it switches as well to like the moon landing or something. And it's like really cool. I, I just like the idea that you don't have to focus on one emotion for like s that long because that's not the way that humans work. Like I honestly, people have so many, you know, synapses are firing so many thoughts. And it's just like, I think that's a really good reflection on, you know, showing that just because you're in a conflict zone doesn't mean that you're, that you're going to be only thinking about that every day and like, you know, I think it's really cool the way that they, and I think it's very reflective in, I like watched a video of these kids um, who were going through um, an area that had been bombed in Gaza and they were two kids and they found this goldfish that had survived um, in a bowl and the smiles on their faces, like, oh, I know it's, 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 a, it's an interesting one because it's like, that is, that's not normal. That should not, they should not be in that situation in the first place yeah. but they are they are and it's yeah. and it's like the fact that they the human capacity to just especially children's capacity to that's the only thing that they kind of know and in the media like we've like we know that they're that they shouldn't be in that situation but also showing that they're humans and that is their life for now and it's kind of like showing the joy and showing the fact that they're yeah. living with it is, I think, really important. As additionally to just say, stating the facts and stating the kind of, yeah. I think it's a, a more reflection on as us as we get older. It's this like intrinsic desire to protect children. You know, when we see something and you're like, "Oh, kids shouldn't be in that situation." Of course, we all agree. But like we said, it exists and. Children are so resilient because they, really they don't have the experience to understand that, oh, this yeah. is, uh oh, we shouldn't be here yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Um, but, like, I think we were talking about this before, like, the older that you get, the more you return. You're looking to return to that awe and innocence and 
playfulness that they find that even in the most dire circumstances yeah. that we would just prescribe or describe yeah. they just are getting on and having exactly. a good time you yeah know? and that's why i think this film is really smart is because it positions it from that point of view immediately she's trying to understand it but you know to her she's the the way she understands the emotion is true the people she loves exactly but the information she's given is a history lesson you know to her it's something that's happened that she's not experienced yeah. you know what i mean yeah. but at the same time because she is who she is she's taking on the emotion of these people as well because of her connection exactly you know? i think it's so well done like the mirroring of the yeah that's exactly it like she there's the emotional side of it that is runs through the whole thing but and with alongside the actual factual the actual factual the the, the actual the factual, actual factual yeah. With with that, the way that they work in tandem is so well done. And like I just don't think I think it's just one of the one films that I've seen do and just the fact that it's an animation is like you know Even better. Adds, adds yeah, for to, us. Yeah, yeah, so good. Um Yeah, and then I think just even the attention to detail, like with the set design, with the blue sheets, the blue the blue plastic sheets that kind of separate the different compartments and stuff. And I think it's so cool the way that they've built the set um, vertically because I think, wait, there's a fact somewhere that's really interesting. Dig into it there. Yeah. You've got so it's many like, notes. I know, yeah. man. Um, I don't even need to look at mine. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I think there's like 35,000 people. Is that true? 35 to 45,000 people um, what in did you one write this square on the back mile of? because I started doing it today and I couldn't print it out. So I printed out the notes at home and then I wrote some more. These are also notes. Yeah. Uh, on notes. Yeah. Jenna, I'm so impressed. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. 35. You know, 000. this is like a dream come true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll stop talking. Then. Yeah. Um, 35,000. Yeah. So there's, so in these tower blocks, there'll be like 35,000 to 45,000 people in one square mile which is like so over overpopulated but i think it's they've got no choice but to build upwards so the actual foundations of the building of the kind of blocks are like falling apart so they've got these like blue sheets they've got these wires hanging down but like there's a scene where a piece of the block falls and narrowly misses wardi and she like almost falls off the block but it's so I think a, like another section of this is like, oh, they just overlook that mm. entire, like they just move on. And yeah. I think that's, it just like these little layers of how they've just adapted to their environment. I know, like, I think it's so interesting the way that they've done the layering of the kind of different aspects of how they've adapted to their situation. And um, even in the character design, like they don't have to, I think that's why the script is so nuanced i think because the character design you kind of see the effect of the occupation and like not the occupation the them being refugees you kind of see the effect of that in the character design through like the slumped shoulders and like the kind of sad eyes and i think that's really that's true yeah well like it's just another layer that adds to it and i think that mirrored with the kind of sound like the layer the layers of sound design and the mixed media approach, I think it's just all of it makes a really well-rounded film. Talk a bit more about the sound design then. You've mentioned this, yeah. but you've not dug into it yet. <laughs> okay. Tell me what you mean. So the sound design, so apparently um, they used a sound designer who went into the camps and recorded it directly from the source, which is really cool. Um, and I think that they, like even in the moments where Waradi is like, climbing to go see another family member they'll have the call to prayer they'll have like a dad shouting like yalla like basura yeah, like yeah, at, yeah. at one of his sons and it's just like it's very um true to life what you would hear i mean what i hear in jordan so i'm assuming what you'd hear in lebanon as well but um so i think having and then that accompanied with with such a with a script that's so focused on the details of the sort of the nuances of the language, I think that's the kind of real strength of the film as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think also having it in, I've not, so I've only seen the, Eng I've only seen the version that's in English, but I heard that the Arabic version is like twice as 
authentic mm, so i should okay. really see well, yeah. that yeah 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 because <laughs> the english version is it's like the voice acting is really cool but i would love to see it in arabic as well i need to find how many times have you watched it i've that? seen it now four times four times which isn't even that much you know it premiered in annecy in 2018 i don't know if i guess waltz with bashir might have made it to i don't know if it came to annecy but i think it's great that a palestinian film premiered um yeah well i guess in that sense you know st- stories are stories you know yeah and, and especially if they're honest and well told from, yeah uh, like a unique human perspective it's not like I wouldn't say this film has any political agenda. That's the thing, yeah. yeah. So I guess it's just a story of yeah. like, okay, this exists. By the way, guys, this exists yeah. in the world, yeah. Um, and this is how people deal with it. And let yeah. me just walk you through the history while we're also looking at it. Yeah, and like even I think though exactly, there's no. That's what I really like about it is it it understands the politics and it has them in the background, but it doesn't make them the center of attention as they kind of always are which is really important in humanizing a thing that i I, i'm going to link it to like another um thing that i saw which is this performance art piece by emily jasser and basically she so there's like not there's a big issue with the occupation is that there's no freedom of movement so what she did was she went to these palestinian locals and she said if i could do anything in the world for you like if Mm. i could do anything for you like what would it be and it was just kind of highlighting what their requests were and then going and doing them so like they'd be they'd be requests like i'll go give my mother a a hug and a kiss and she would go and do that do that for them because they live in a different area and like it's impossible to get there or it would be like go visit the tree that was planted on my grandfather's grave i'm I'm not sure these, these these are specifics, but a good example. Yeah, yeah good example. I believe that. Yeah, <laughs> and so she would go visit that, or she'd go play football with the boys in her in the local kind of town, and it's just I think that 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 kind of relates back to the tower where it's just showing these mundane moments that aren't publicized and making them into a narrative, and I think that's so beautiful and so important and with, necessary. Yeah, necessary with marginalized groups and. Yeah, I think it's really cool. Yeah, it is really cool. really cool, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You were talking briefly about the um, the mix of mediums yeah. and as she climbs up and it has all these details, but obviously stop motion is a crafted, you know, you have to make the sets and everything. Yeah. Do you know his process for making the sets? Did you read about that? A little? I kind of read about it. So I yeah. think the actual animation took him, s- they took six months to do it, whereas I think the development was like the development of the story and stuff was a bit longer but I think with building the sets they used a lot of reference footage so they followed that really closely um and obviously his experience in the camps and I think constantly throughout the film he referred back to like his friends and asked them if it was and asked them if it was kind of accurate and so I think that's really evident in the film is that nothing it doesn't feel like a stole like it doesn't feel like a culture that's been like amalgamated from different yes, things yeah, which i think can so often happen. yeah it's quite aladdin aladdin example, with the yeah. bollywood dancing yeah, yeah it's <laughs> kind of random but um yeah i think that's the thing um it was very well researched from what i understand and um yeah with the attention to, de- to detail with like the wires and the kind of the blue sheets the blue sheets which i love um and there's a thing about um this so I was I was listening to an interview between mm. him and um, uh, what's her name Dina Matar and apparently he was very inspired by a book that she wrote where she interviewed various Palestinians and talked to them and and um, Palestinians so Palestinian refugees and also um, the is and also Israelis and asked them you know a very variety of ages and just asked them about their experience like within the conflict so she gathered all this information and then i think matt used that quite a bit to reference sort of the storytelling the set design the character design so yeah i think it it was just very clear that it was very well researched and 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 he also said that it was a matt so the actual film he called it like a thank you letter to his friends and family and from the refuge like and from the camps and i thought that was so nice because when do you hear like when do you ever hear a film being like a a thank you i just thought that was beautiful i thought that was such a beautiful thing to say it is beautiful it's like um 
was it a grave of the fireflies is an apology to his sister they, yeah, yeah i heard that yeah very beautiful sentiment but that means yeah. it's pure you it know? is so pure i think that's the thing and matt as a director like when you see him in interviews he's the most humble person in the world i'm like you've created a, like a master it's so good like I, I wish that i want i want i want it to be publicized like i was on movie for a bit but i i don't know where else to how to like to find, ask people yeah. to see it because it's kind of so well hidden Hard to find. Like, well, can you find <laughs> yeah. it? i think also coming from a norwegian director is it is a really it adds a different like viewpoint to it as well which is i think good as well because unfortunately i think that if when if you talk about your own kind of cause there's an element of oh you're like biased towards it but i think also having you know other people other kind of yeah I don't know if that makes sense. I'm going to yeah. yeah, no, it makes yeah. total sense because it's like if if I made a film about the British invasion of Ireland, yeah. people are like, you know, oh, of course you did. Yeah. You know, of course. Yeah, that's the thing. Whereas, um, you know, there's a great example. There's a British filmmaker called Ken Loach and he made a beautiful film called The Wind That Shakes the Barley, mm. live action. Mm. But that's about the Irish Civil War. He's okay. a British director. And he's British, yeah. yeah. But it also is the lead up toward that where the British were oppressing it. So yeah. it's like that kind of outside perspective of, well, it's almost as if <laughs> it's different because they were the oppressors. I guess it is a different perspective. Like it's not an Israeli making this film. Yeah. It's not a Palestinian making this it's, film. Yeah, Norwegian guy. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really someone, cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Who's quite far away from this. Yeah. But is also incredibly close to it. Yeah, it's a thank very you letter. close, yeah. Yeah, it just adds another layer to it where it's makes it big layer yeah, yeah because it's removal then you know it's mm. it's but it means that you know for someone to be removed yet become so close to something means that there's an authenticity in yeah. that and this is a story that kind of spoke so much to someone that they went and made an animated film I know. which by the way is not easy no not a short <laughs> film a feature film i know a feature film and with a mix of mediums as well which yeah. is incredibly difficult too. honestly yeah yeah, it is a big feat. Yeah, and the connect obviously has the connection through his mum, who was a nurse, who sounds amazing. And um, it, it's, it's, actually, it's a very heartfelt film. Like, I think, take all the context out of it, I I would still, I think that most people would feel, like, emote very strongly to it just from the, the narrative and the kind of naivety of it as well. I think it's a really beautifully, like, there's an element of naivety, but it's not, it's it's such a subtle balance where it's like you just find it really endearing the characters like i don't i really don't want to spoil it but i really spoil it this is okay. the point okay, okay. don't yeah. okay skip this part if you if you haven't seen if it. you haven't seen it but when um her great grandfather eventually dies at the end of the film he there's like the puppet has a tiny little smile on his face before he passes away and it's the most gentle death very gentle and i absolutely and it just made it 10 times set like more heart-wrenching because you were just like so it's this naivety of the puppets as well where they've only got a f like they it's really well done but they've got very simple expressions that are just i think perfect i i can't imagine i, I think it's just so well it's very close to a perfect film in my in my eyes just the the narrative the the puppets the, the visuals i just yeah do you think the pullback of facial expression is more endearing because you're able to put your own emotions onto it then. yeah i think so there's that mirroring idea of like yeah i think it's quite a relatable i mean you know grandparents dying, dying yeah. and we, uh, not just great grandparents great we grandparents. all die yeah, yeah we all die yeah. uh but i guess yeah not having this overly melodramatic scene where everyone's sobbing and stuff i think is quite good because surrounding I, the bed yeah. yeah and yeah exactly it's just a very like gentle he starts pointing out all of the so i think he asks Weredi to tell him about the um the flowers that that she can see and and the and he just starts repeating them and then he dies as he's saying them and it's just like that's so peaceful peaceful and heart wrenching and mm, beautiful um yeah. yeah because he has in his heart the wish to return yeah you know? yeah he has the key he has the key which he gave to her and then he tells her that um she was the hope that he 
had lost. That's why he gave her the key. Because the whole reason why he gets sicker and sicker is because he tells the doctor to he doesn't want any more medication because it's too expensive and he wants to send Wadi to school instead. So it's that kind of that's such a tragic story, but even that is told in such a subtle way. It's not been it's not made the center of the film as well. It's kind of just like, oh, this is a necessity. Yeah. Why even, why focus on my past? And yeah. Take away someone else's future. Exactly. And that is that sacrificial idea that's not made melodramatic is really, really but nice. it's also like a great metaphor of it evading generational trauma yeah. because he's not forcing that on her exactly. now i know he gave her a key at the end yeah <laughs> but, but, but at the same time it becomes the, the key is the future you know what i mean and that's why i really found it so beautiful because it could be so easy for him to be like you have to make our family proud get, yeah. get us back our lineage you know blah 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 yeah he doesn't but even say that no it's the understanding of like life things change you know and what's more important the the land or the family and you know the the people we have the story and it's unfortunate everything that has come to it and obviously it's tragic and the things are still happening which is mind blowing but at the same time you know he's saying okay will i live there forever he will yeah. but he's not forcing anyone else to do that exactly and it's kind of exactly he's basically saying you know get your education um and you know whatever uh, comes with yeah that. and yeah. it's it's this like it's just so like softly done and i think it's so nice um and even so what did his sister is leaving to sweden i think um and funny it's not norway i know that's yeah. what i was i think it's sweden but um yeah. and what where do like is really upset with her and it's like why are you leaving us but and she's like you'll understand when you're older and she's like no I won't but it's it's that idea of I mean she feels guilt for leaving but she shouldn't because it's what needs it's to happen. Yeah. yeah and also this idea that even though they're from this overcrowded you know falling apart tower block they love their their new they they do love it like it's their community as well so I feel like I really like the way that they've kind of they made it so that they're kind of almost rebuilding what Palestine is to them in this new place and trying to get a sense of permanence. Yeah, and I yeah, think yeah. it's really, yeah, really not a really nice addition to, to how they've built the set as well. It's like, um, you know, each level she goes up, it kind of reflects the story that they're looking at as well. Yeah. You know, and I really yeah. find that beautiful. Yeah. And with pigeon, Bo so P pigeon boy, they call him, but um, I guess her uncle, cause it's her aunt's, brother um the way that he ha he has those pigeons because they have the freedom of movement to fly around and he doesn't have that and it's kind of stuff like that where it's like this like yearning for what they don't have but it's not like com like they're not they're not outwardly saying yeah that they are oppressed but it's just you know it's just sort of a it's just their environment it's their environment and they are so much more than their suffering yes they're yeah. not their limitations yeah you know they're seeking ways to go beyond that constantly yeah. and like you said you know the grandmother fixing the stuff yeah they're just living their lives and they're you know? laughing and they're drinking coffee and they're like <laughs> yeah yeah sharing stories yeah you know yeah and yeah i think that that's what makes it such a a like all-encompassing like really relatable film i think from i would say for most people i i, see. I mean I can't, I can't really i can't, I can't comment because i i relate to it obviously because yeah. it is like a palestinian family but yeah. i don't know from when i showed it to my friends they yeah. said that it was you know do you see a lot of your family in that family yeah i think that's why i okay. I, I love it i definitely see a lot and it's so nice to see that like you just you don't so well, you don't see the kind of representation that you would... I was thinking about this because I was thinking... I had the same reaction when... Um, I don't even like football. But um, when the World Cup was going on in, over Christmas and the Moroccans uh, won something and in Trafalgar Square, there was a massive... So I was just I just happened to be walking through and um, I stopped for like a full hour and I was... Because I thought it was something bad because my immediate reaction is, oh, a bunch of Arabs like protesting yeah, yeah, i was yeah. like oh something's happened yeah. like let me check it out yeah. yeah and then i was like stopped and i realized it was something happy and i was like oh my god i mean i know they're north african not really like but you know 
I know what you mean. Potato, potato. That's, that, well, yeah. that's the Arabic part it's, of Africa. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I was kind of still, I was, I, it made me really emotional. And I was like, why am I emotional about this? It's football. Like, I don't, don't even like football. But it's that idea of the mid, like Arab, Middle East and whatever, close, close to celebrating something rather than being like, just, you know, I, I think it's just really nice to, because you don't see it. You just don't see that side of humanity in in them. And I think that's what makes stories like these really important, where it's like they are people just like you and I. And Yeah, hmm. because it's, again, it's like, okay, the hero's journey. Let's talk about it for a second. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to rub my eyes if it pains me, but I love Campbell's work. Yeah. You know, ultimately this story, is it about her? In a way, it isn't. You know, it's a she is just the the lens that we see the family yeah. through. You know, and of course, there's a beautiful narrative of her uncovering the history and traveling up and up, and then you know she gets to the top and is revealed to be the future of the family. You know, the peak basically. Yeah. It's a beautiful metaphor of constantly yeah, she's moving going up, up. You know, yeah. and. Um, but in a hero's journey, it would be about her and her struggle, her inner struggle, all these kind of things. Whereas this girl is just so open, you know, of course she's emotional about her sister and blah, 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 you know, there's yeah. like conflict there. But she's a kid as well, so it's like kid. normal, yeah. Yeah, she's 11, right? She's literally 11, yeah. yeah my niece is 11. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that would be a strange story. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, I love it for that reason. Yeah, 100%. I yeah I totally get what you mean about um it's a hero it's not a traditional hero's journey yeah in the way that it's it's not a self-reflected story. it's not yeah, yeah it's quite a yeah it's an expansive kind of story yeah it's like you you were saying the phrase mirroring she's a mirror for everything else that we see things through rather than you know a, a classic hero's journey story is all about the internal you know it's all about the person yeah. overcoming their inner most yeah. cave, you know, all the kind of darkness within someone or the internal struggle. Whereas I don't really feel that she has that per se. She's just literally experiencing their lives. Yeah, exactly. And I think experiencing it through the lens of someone who hasn't really been aware of the sort of precariousness of like life. Yeah. Is that a word? Yeah, of know. course. Yeah. Cool. It's three words actually. P O L. She's a Paul. She's yeah. a Paul. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think Palestine. Palestine. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> um, so I guess it's all new to her in the same way that it's new to the viewer. Like I would say, like even to me, I didn't know that much about the sort of Lebanon refugee side of things I just kind of know the West Bank and Gaza and like Jordan I guess because that's where we're from but yeah I didn't really know much about Lebanon so I wasn't fully like I didn't go in being like okay I know everything like I was, I was like <laughs> I don't actually know that much to be yeah. fair so it was it was, in, it was definitely interesting. I learned a lot as well mm. so I think it's really successful because I definitely emoted to it and I also learned and I think it's you could show it to a child and they would ask similar questions to Wardi, I think. Like, I think they would ask, you know, why can't, why don't you just go back home and stuff like that? And, um, and I think that that makes it helpful in terms of you, you don't feel that different. You, you kind of just follow along with her. And I think that makes it quite almost interactive. It's not, yeah. No, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's what I was saying as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah interactive. Yeah. It, yeah, it okay. does feel interactive in mm. that sense. And that's why I think why you, when you said that you felt like it was your family on on the screen, I think that's part of it, I would say. Yes, because family dynamics, you know, they're, they're the same around the world. People forget that people are just people yeah, everywhere, literally. everywhere, you know, and the same patterns repeat themselves, yeah. you know. And no matter where you go, especially if it's a, a, a precarious tower block in Lebanon. I was yes. going to say Jordan. <laughs> yeah, no, confused me so there for a second. Yeah, I said a lot. Did you did you see the tower before you made checkpoint? No. So that's that's the funny thing is that I saw it halfway through production, yeah. and then I was like, oh my god, there is so much in this that we can we can like sort of emulate in terms of the <laughs> not that we can steal no, <laughs> yeah. that we can like. So we were way into product. We were like 
we'd done the full story, we'd done mm. the animatic. But um, so actually I reached out to Matt and I, mm. and I told him about like his, I didn't tell him about his film. I told him how much I loved his film. Yeah. And then I told him about Checkpoint and um, he was so like open to, he was like, oh, that's amazing. Like send, send us, send me like your animatic and I'll have a look. And like, he gave us some really like helpful kind of notes and stuff. He was like, oh, this scene, you know, and he was so supportive. And that's what I mean. I think you can just tell that it was made by, I, I'm, so, I'm sure his team were like, just like him, but he's such a humble person person and he had such a pure like a like not agenda like not even that's the thing he didn't have an agenda I feel in making the film it's just such a pure thank you letter I guess to to love I don't know yeah and I just think that the way that I think just the whole film is a very kind-hearted film yeah so I guess in talking so when Matt was talking about um the sort of script aspect of things and the fact that he didn't want to focus on just their tragedy mm. it, he kind of he I've got a quote here he said um <laughs> so families try to live with dignity and don't talk about the more dramatic aspects of their lives um but they might have a little brother who was killed or a part of their family in exile in Australia or a grandfather who's died because he didn't have enough money for, money for medication um and that all has there's a lot that isn't talked about that you have to take the time to unearth. Um, and apparently that's how he wrote the film. So everything from the past is kind of lying dormant mm. and then it's slowly uncovered. And I think, yeah. yeah. I, I, one of my friends, he's a psychologist and he yeah. said that like um, issues that untalked about become trauma. Yeah. And trauma by its very nature then is buried. So it takes a lot to dig that out. Yeah. Especially... And it's really a failing of the person then if they're not open to talking about it. Uh, because really, once you start talking about it, it, it's no longer trauma. Yeah. And when you see her kind of moving up and pulling out the traumas of each person, it is like a hidden layer that everyone kind of knows. They've been told these stories. Like most people aren't even batting an island to exactly. the story that's been told. Yeah. But to her, it's the first time. Yeah. You know, so imagine later when there's another kid who's going up the tower. Yeah. And she's there. Like, what would her reaction be? Because now she understands these stories. Now she's been told them. Yeah. But now she also has another trauma on top, which is her grandfather's wish, you know. Yeah. At, at the back of that. Exactly. So I really like the the layering exactly. of potential that's even layered in the story. Yeah. I think exactly, definitely that key word of like layering and... um taking the time to unearth I thought was really beautiful phrase beautifully well yeah. done Matt was yeah. great great <laughs> yeah. great phrase it's kind of that um <laughs> and I think there's this idea of yeah Palestinians uh so I guess the thing is that the film isn't when I say Palestinians you could you could, this is a film about Palestinians but just generally with people in conflict zones they have to do a lot of waiting and a lot of trying like waiting for life to improve so during that time I think that idea of sort of carrying on and treating life in a kind of we take each day as it comes kind of way is a aspect that is really well explored in this film. Um, and I think it's cool because exactly with the different reactions to what's happened, some sometimes in the film um, a, char a character would start to talk about a trauma from the past yeah. and another character would be like no like sh she doesn't need yeah. to know that yeah. and it's that idea that actually kids understand much more than we give them credit for as yeah. well um maybe not understand not understand totally but, but they can certainly endure it yeah. yeah really really strongly i was gonna ask you what your opinion was uh, or what your experience was the first time you watched it so i watched it i watched it because i was looking up other palestinian animated films I think for my dissertation um because I'd watched Waltz with Bashir and I knew I wanted to talk about it but I was like I need a, I need something a bit more from the other side of the viewpoint to sort of contrast it with so I found this film um and I watched it and I was like this is exactly what um this is exactly how I would want to see us like represented almost um and I think 
I think I remember my the the scene that hit me the hardest was the photo album scene where they're looking through the photos. I think it's partially because it was literally like they'd taken a photo album from my grandma's house and put it on wow. the screen. Yeah. So there was that. But I think it's also I was almost relieved when I saw this film because I was like, I'm so grateful that this film exists. And I, my immediate reaction was, I need to show everybody this because it is so subtly, it's just, I think it's a beautiful film. I think it's a poetic film. And I, and I just kind of, I was like, this is exactly it. Like they're not, they're not taking any kind of side. They're not, they're literally stating somebody's that what happened to them and then also showing a slice of life kind of side of things which I love so I guess I was just like wow I I was just in awe I was I was like wow I need to reach out to the director like this is so good (laughs) and did you have an emotional reaction apart from that yeah yeah. at the end yeah I cried at the end and in the middle um (laughs) I basically cried. I don't and, know if I actually the saw the film. Yeah. <laughs> I was too busy crying. <laughs> Very wet film. Yeah. 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 Um, blurry. <laughs> blurry <laughs> film. Uh, yeah. Resolution could have been better. <laughs> it's just my tears. <laughs> um, but yeah, I guess definitely a strong emotional reaction. But um, And then afterwards, more of the kind of what did I actually love about the film? And then because I had to analyze it for the essay. So like, because I wanted to, but um, having that kind of, Yeah. Did you show your family? I so I was at I was at Bournemouth at the yeah. time, um, but I told them to watch it. I don't know if they did or not because I, I mean, did. I did. It's ask. hard to find. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I asked. I I think what I'm going to do now that we're back, I'm going to get them to sit down and watch it with with me. They're going to have to watch Lo- it again. Lock the doors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I think yeah, my mum would definitely would cry. I didn't get to see her reaction, but I'm. What about the, you? Obviously, showed them your short. They must have been at screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. My mum, my mum, bless her. She was so supportive and so emotional the whole time. It was, it was really lovely. And we kind of, she was almost like a second producer. So we, I kind of ran all my <laughs> ideas by her. I was like, "What do you think of like in this part of the story? Like this happens?" And she was like, "Yeah, that would be cool." Like, so it was kind of, yeah. It was really she. She had a big involvement in the film as well. So she was involved the whole way through. From not the whole way through. So I kind of kept it quite. I, the story was established, and then when we were tweaking stuff, I was like, "Oh, is this authentic to what? What this like? What happens? Um, like in it's more like the details of the other characters in the checkpoint. Like would would this person react in this way to this and stuff like that." Um, but then I showed it to, I got to show it to my grandparents as well. Um, and they, my grandpa was like, this is the best gift that someone could have. And I was like, that's really yeah. lovely. Yeah. Do you think you kind of made it as a gift or are you just? Yeah, I like, a- I, at the end of it, I at, I had a little note that said for the people of Palestine, for Tieta and Jinto, which are my grandparents. Okay, um, yeah. That means grandma and grandpa um, in Arabic. But mm. yeah, so yeah so it kind of was to mm. them i think it's beautiful then and this you know if we jot down the two paths of storytelling that seem yeah. to come out of uh either outside or inside perspectives around the middle east of like conflict based or gifts you know and what yeah. a great way of looking at it it's like okay i want to give a positive cathartic experience to people who might feel invisible you say you're you're not you know we see the experience especially matt who literally went and saw the experience and and created a film about it obviously you're much closer to it you know but that's a beautiful yeah counter narrative i like that yeah i'd actually that idea of like gift giving in the Mm. form of film because also the idea of the permanence of film and once it's out there yeah, yeah, yeah um is great because especially for a community a community who don't have permanence at all i think the idea of having something permanent that reflects your community that's kind of 
I guess, yeah. Yeah, at, at least of that time. Yeah, you know, like a time strange. stamp. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, yeah. It's something to say, this was what life was like then. I mm-hmm. mean, it's something that, I don't know if you see them, but I'm always super curious of like when I see it then and now. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, that's what it was like. Crazy exactly. to think that this is how things change. Yeah. You know? um, and so in a way, you know, when you release a film, it's a, you're creating a then. Yeah. I mean, even though you're releasing it now, it's it's it becomes it a becomes then. a then, yeah, pretty immediately. Yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, it is like almost like stopping time and mm. capturing it. Yeah, and I guess books and stuff are the same, but with a film, it's there's that added element of it's a visual medium and and it's sound. It's just such an all encompassing medium where it's like it's not like a painting and it's not like a book in that sense. It's not a song. It's not a song either. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's all of those, <laughs> especially yeah. animated films. And yeah. as we all know, is um, you know, I, I've said it, and people can quote me on it if they mm. want. But I think animation is is probably the greatest medium of storytelling. Yeah. In human history. Yeah, it's clo- it's very close to magic. I would say <laughs> yeah. it is. It's yeah. like you're almost playing God, like because you're controlling everything, everything. Yeah. everywhere. Yeah, all at once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just want to say thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Cole. It's it's something I've wanted to ask you for a while. I've and I knew you would always pick the tower, so I was always ready for it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. definitely. Despite the, the calls of potentially shark tail, <laughs> which as you can imagine would be a very different discussion. Yeah, next time. Yeah. <laughs> sequel, sequel. If nobody, if nobody picks shark tail... <laughs> Will Smith and the gang. Will and Smith and the gang. Yeah, and Sexy fish. <laughs> <laughs> I am love Checkpoint. I love your perspective. Thank and, you. And, you know, I'm so grateful to have you as a friend in that sense Me because too. it's great to hear your experience and to see your perspectives on these stories. And so thank you so much for sharing this. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. It's been amazing. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Whoa, oh, wait, animation. <laughs> 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 This is so nerdy. This is so nerdy. Wow, look at Woo. this. Merch. My uh, one and only t-shirt. Yes. <laughs> Slay. Go watch everything. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for putting it on at the end. <laughs> <laughs> right at the end. Yeah. Live action footage. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>